I'm going to upload the old one too, I think. Um, All right. I'll stick around until five, but I have to go at five. Okay. That, that, that works. Probably me too. Uh, oh. Yeah, I think five is a fine ending point then. Yes. That's fine with me. All right. Okay. So let me pull up the project. I'm actually in the process of uh, fixing that irritating bug with the uh, one thing I'm going to do to show you guys how to, how to do this. Um, um, I've got this task set up here to, that's designed to help update dependencies. Um, so I just ran it and basically if you see what's happened, it will have updated my package.json file to add these. Um, I ran, if you just run npm run ncu, it'll just tell you what needs to be updated. Uh, the double backslash allows me to pass arguments uh, and then I just told it to go ahead and do it. My experience with running npm updates is that they're pretty safe. Um, npm you know, is that 100% true? No, I've certainly had cases where stuff is broken, um, but, uh, but most of the time it's safe to do. The actual reason I wanted to do this, however, is because I updated the Gatsby theme development package that we're using uh, our NPM, I think the 125 one. And so I actually want to install that. That's going to take like five minutes. Because, well, I fixed a few things and then I also, this stupid disagreement about whether or not we're going to use client ID or client ID is my main, my main goal. So we're going to use client ID so I can get rid of that. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. So I'm trying to remember where we were. So I think at this point we were actually able to uh, to send messages back and forth uh, to. I've gone ahead and done that. Um, and then I think, so I think we had um, we had the messages, were we saving the messages? I think we were. Um, I think that maybe a place to start is to go back and look at our message type and see if there's any work that we need to do here. Okay, we have a timestamp and then we had this email address and we're, I think we added those because we were setting them on the server. Um, I don't need a log. Logging command here, and let's see if that's actually what we're doing. So um, we're setting the timestamp and email right here. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so so the messages that are arriving at our now, you know, if, if we really wanted to use the type system more to our advantage here, what we might want to do is actually split this into a chitter send message and chitter receive message to reflect the fact that every message that arrives at our listener should now have an email address. The only reason we move these to this partial block is because they're not set by the sender. Um, so, but anyway, but the, the receiver should, should always uh, have uh, these set. And so let's uh, actually- Jeff. Yeah, yeah Harsh. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a side question and uh, you know, I'm still kind of learning React. So um, I still don't quite get how uh, context providers work and like how to work with like all the context providers we have like the Google yeah. campaign or the so I mean I, I mean one way to think about a context provider is, is just simply allows uh, a react uh, component to receive information across component boundaries okay so before context providers unless you used something like redux or something like that you essentially, the only way, let, let, let's say you have a, 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 a component that has a parent, has a parent, has a parent, right? I mean, React builds a tree of components. Right? Yeah. And in fact, hold on a sec. Let's actually run, I think I'll just go ahead and run this guy. Um, let's see if there's actually, oh, wait, hold on. So I'm going to something here. Compose. Oh, no, the document post is fine. Awesome. Okay, good. Um, because if you have, that's not going to work yet. That's, if you have, um, there, React has a uh, development tool extension for um, Chrome. It probably has one for Firefox and other browsers as well. But you can actually use this to view the component tree. So that's what we're going to do here in a minute once this gets fired up. 
Um, oh, yeah, I remember I had something like that for Angular. Yeah, exactly. Back, back uh, when people used Angular. Yeah, no, people still use Angular. I mean, Django is making yeah. a comeback, apparently. I was shocked to hear Django is sold out. <laughs> yeah. Ago, back I mean, I still work with Rails, so same energy. Yeah. Rails is Rails was had gotten to the point where it was better. Okay, so let's make sure that things are still working. They are. Uh, now let's go over here and inspect. And over here, here's my component tree. So look at this. I mean, this is like oh. deep, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's actually quite a bit here that we didn't add. But we can see things that we recognize, right? So there's our Google login provider. That's something we wrote. There's this is something that you know we wrote. Element tracker, the Maze provider. That's for the editors. This is all stuff that's provided by that Gatsby CS125 theme. Um, and then down here, um, we have Rapid G. That's that's a, something. Anyway, so you can see like these these component hierarchies can get arbitrarily complicated. Um, our, I'm trying to actually get down to the point where we, as the element tracker, it's got a thing, thing. I'm trying to get to the, uh, maybe if I, well, no. okay, so here, <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point where actually, uh, here's a chitterer component, okay? So this component needs state that's provided by, where is it? This, this component, right? It's way above it in the, in the component hierarchy, okay? So you have two, two options. One is you can literally find every component on the path between those two, okay? And you can add a prop to it to pass the component, the, the state that the tutor provider needs, those functions and other you know, registration hooks and stuff like that, all the way down, okay? Um, and so you'd have to pass it through material UI components, you'd have to pass it through these element tracker wrappers that are part of our, you know, our toolkit. You know, whatever. Um, so that's one way to do it, and and that would theoretically be possible, but it's also just absolutely awful. Um, and so, context allows you to just traverse those boundaries, right? Um, so a context basically means that once I add, so if you look up here, you'll see our chitter provider acts as a context provider. Anything below it in the tree now, right? So anything down here, and pretty much everything up here. Our context providers, but everything below our chitter provider can now access that information, right? And so that's that's essentially what context is, right? I mean, in the original versions of React, you had two ways to pass information to a component: props, which have to be passed to it by its parent, or passed through somehow, um, or state, which is maintained by the component itself. Now there's this third piece of information. Right? Uh, and, and so that's really, you know, that, that was the goal. Before you had this, you had ways to implement something similar using tools like Redux, right? So what Redux allows you to do is it maintains this state for the entire uh, page, and then it provides you with a way to wrap your components so that Redux will add props to it corresponding to the state and re-render it as necessary. Um, so context and in, 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 you know, I think in my thinking is just sort of react, you know, reacts official uh, solution to the same problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, wait, do we have Redux on the other, what was it, the uh, app? We, I used to, I, I tried using Redux in the, in the CS125 app that we were developing yeah. like, you know, a year ago, and the one got abandoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Sometimes you have to let things go. I was happy, happy that that one that that, that we did eventually let it go. But um, yeah, so so that's an example of a of a of a place where you know um, I tried using Redux. I, I did not like Redux very much. Um, I felt like there was a lot of boilerplate, and I, I think we've talked about this before. It was yeah. also really unclear to me how to compose. Redux, right? Um, it's like Redux is great when you're building one app that's a self-contained universe, but it's less great when you're trying to build one small thing that you're going to merge with some other small things, right? And so you can okay. see here this composition in action, right? I mean, I've got a the, the, the Google login component that we maintain as a context provider, 
Uh, the element tracker server is a context provider. The MACE component, which saves editor contents, is a context provider. The GED, uh, GED has a context provider that it uses to communicate with the GED backend server. So all of these are part of our app. None of them know anything about each other. Um, and none of them need to know anything about this new thing that we're doing. Um, you know, and they're all, to some degree, one of the things that happens with Redux is pretty soon you have all this crap in your store that's not related to, that you have pieces of state that right really aren't related to each other, except that they happen to be part of the same app, right? Um, here, each piece of the page is managing its own state in a way that's appropriate to what it's, it's trying to do, right? And, you know, the other thing that's really cool about context is that you can have places where the, the context providers collide, right? So, Actually, I've been working, I'll show you an example of this. I've been working on a new editor component for our, for the, the, the CS125 website. Um, this has gotten horribly complicated, but it's, it works. And oh no. It's, it's pretty. Um, and this is, you know, to me, a place where it's probably okay to take on some complexity because this is a pretty huge part of the site. Um, but this is actually using two context providers, right? So far, maybe it'll use more eventually, right? One of them is saving the editor contents and the other is for, for allowing us to run stuff using G. Um, so, you know, when you do need to combine contexts together, you can do that um, and you can do it in a pretty nice way. So, so anyway, hope, hopefully that answers the question. Let's, let's try to do something front endy today just for fun. And, and the thing let's try to do is let's try to improve the display of our messages. Um, and, you know, you guys might have your own ideas about how to do this. I don't really mind uh, or, or, uh, or, or care, um, you know, how you do it. I'd be interested to see some approaches to it. Um, what I'm going to try to do um, is get to the point where we have a avatar displayed next to the message. And, and maybe the, the user's name as well, although I'm not sure, we have to figure out whether we have, we have access to that information. I think we do. Um, let's try to get the, and actually let's try to get the name because having the name without having to resort to accessing some other forms of CS125 information would actually be really convenient. So why don't we see if we can actually get that? Let's see what, let's, let's see what happens when I go over to the server and I yank on, and I just, I don't just get the email here. Let's also get the name. Uh, so we're going to do let name string find, uh, and then I'm going to say, now I should probably adjust this a little bit, or I should say, let's payload is equal to this payload, and then we'll pull email name. So let's strip these off right here, and. Left side of the comma operators and use the L. Okay, and then we'll say names. There might be a cheaper way to do this. Let's log the name. All right. So this is now going to. Oh, look at that! That looks fantastic. Let's let's use that. I'm really happy to share that. All right, so now what we need to do, we have to, we actually have to have a way to get this around, obviously. So we're going to need to stick it onto our message. So our message is now going to include the name, and the string, um, and then we'll stick that down here. I still want the email address. I'll tell you why in a sec. Emails for the gravitat, right? Emails for the gravitat. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So now, again, just make sure this still works. And then now, let's let's put the question is like, you know, you can spend just hours on on front end stuff, right? And it can be fun. Uh, let's not try to get too sucked into this. But maybe I don't know. I mean, I don't use chat apps very much. Like, where where do chat apps typically put somebody's name with respect to a message? I mean, put one on the left over here, maybe. Yeah. 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 Usually it's like either a profile picture or name. Yeah. And like what's, what you what's... types on the right, what other people types on the left. 
Well, I know on, on Facebook Messenger, at least, it's like yeah. tiny, but right above their message. Yeah, and then it has a profile picture to the yeah. left of their message. Okay. Well, I, See, I, I kind of thing... like that. Yeah. I think I would probably put it either above or below in small yeah. type. Mm -hmm. Could you make it yeah. so that messages that you send are on the right side and then messages that everyone else send are on the left side? Yeah, yeah. just alignment. I think Davis did that in his first update. Yeah, Daniel, yeah, just, uh, you're you're building this thing. So the answer to can you make it do that is <laughs> yes. Just <laughs> how much time yeah. do you want to spend? Um, yeah. No, actually, I yeah. don't think that I don't think that'll I be. I think that it's already fun. done. So, well, let's do it for fun. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll 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 get a sense of how to do this. Okay, the first thing I have to figure out is like what's like what's what container is actually holding this? Okay, um, and so okay, so I've got my front end thing. And when I go through the messages, I'm sticking them in a, a P wrapper. I don't know why I have that, but I'll leave that uh, for now. And then, so, so you'll notice, Daniel, this is the, the, this is the container for the message, right? Mm -hmm. And so that the trick here is we, we just, what we want to do is we want to um, adjust the alignment of this container. Um, so what we're using is this class name called classes.message. Classes.message, oh yeah, okay, so this is, a, this is setting it as a, as a flex box. I don't know why I did that. I don't know if that's important or not. Um, Wasn't it flex? Oh, no, it is important because, messages? The, what's that? The, yeah, because the container is flex, okay. And this is actually the trick, because I actually wanted to figure out a way to get to, to scroll in reverse, and so basically I have, I'm using flex box column reverse, which is pretty awesome, um, which basically allows us to kind of bottom anchor this. Right, so the new messages, as you can see, will go up and you know eventually start to scroll the box. Which is pretty cool. Okay, but now what we need is we need to figure out. Uh, let's do this. Let's do. Well, there's two ways to do this. One is to basically just set a style property on this element. Okay, uh, the first thing I need to know is I need to know who I am, um, and so uh, user. Okay, there we go. So this is going to give me, and that is at user.email, get, get basic profile.email. Why is there no user. Dot... There's get ID. Oh, I, it's not gonna, I thought I would have had this as part of the users. I just, I don't have. See here. This is what helps that. Uh, let's see. This is what helps that you wrote the thing. So I can go over here and try to figure out what's going on. Oh, this is an awful. This is not my fault. This is how they set. <laughs> this is how they set things up. Uh, oh, it looks like there is a get email. Uh, oh, I, I know what happened. Sorry. Get get basic profile is a is a function. So I've got to call it, and then I've got to call get email on it and why they do it this way I do not I do not know um, how they do it. Oh user sorry now we're gonna say uh get is signed in now is equal to uh, it's a profile dot get email. Bingo. Okay. And actually, it looks like I can just do this. It's the die properly using the optional property syntax if those aren't defined. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'm about, I'm about to use it. Okay. So that's my email address. So now, essentially, all I want to do is adjust the alignment. Right. Um, and so one of the ways to do that is to just add a style property on this. So we're going to say style is equal to a lot. It's text align, I think. And then we'll say uh, message.email is equal to, and I know that this is defined, so I can be OK with this. Uh, left, oh, put the line to the right, right? Oh, I need to close the div. Yeah. All right, so now let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, and this is this is this stupid bug that involves page refresh. Okay, 
Although, hold on a sec. I, I actually want to fix that because I think I know what's causing it. Okay, so at least the messages that I am sending. Now, the problem is there's no other person in this system. <laughs> so it's not a clear. Tab? Does that help? I mean, yeah, it's we still log in as me. And... Yeah. Pro I mean, the, the, the right way to do this would be to basically have uh, uh, something so that when, um, you know, when, when you were using it in development mode, it would kind of like give you a different email address per, per tab. And that's actually probably the right thing to do. Uh, actually, you know what, hold on, let's, let's do this. So actually this isn't a bad uh, conversation to have because you end up in these situations like this where it's kind of like, what do I do during development, right? Like I might actually want to do um, some things during development that are a little bit different than what I would do normally. And this can cause you to add things. Sometimes this, this means you actually have to build things into the system that you might uh, that might end up, you might end up not liking, uh, or it might end up being more complicated than you would want. Um, so here's an example of that. Um, let's 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 figure out how to support this um, for development. And here's how we're going to do it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a, an optional email. Uh, property that we can pass to the component, um, okay? And what we're going to do now, see, uh, is equal to, and now what we'll do is we'll say, um, rename this. We'll say email. Okay, so essentially I'm going to set this to be either the email prop. Now it's angry because it's unvalidated. We can add that down here. This is a string prop, but it's not required. Um, all right, so now I've got, so what am I doing here? I'm basically allowing the component user to provide an email address as a prop. Now, of course, I don't trust this. And I have to be careful that I'm only going to use this during, uh, during development. But I also want to be able to set it on messages, okay? So that's like probably the right place to do it. I could add it to my join function, but I've already got an email key on my message, right? And let's just use that. So we'll say email, and we'll use actual email, right? So, uh, and, and this will still validate because the, there is an email property on the message. Uh, it's complaining because I need to add the email field so that I recreate this callback. Uh, why are you? Oh, sorry, it's actually not an actual email. All right, good. Um, now the problem is, if I go over to my server side code, the server side code is not going to like this. It's going to die right here, uh, or it should die. Let's actually make sure that that happens. Um, so back here. Um, Client sent email address. Okay, good. So, so I'm not happy about that. And that was that message sent? No, it was not. Okay, what's supposed to happen? Um, okay, so now fun with environment variables. So a, a, a typical way to support this type of thing is basically to set some type of environment variable that you only use during development. Um, and you have to be careful about that because if we left this on during production, we would essentially allow people to impersonate any user, which would be bad. Um, but let's say, let's just set this, and we can, we, eh, where's a good spot for it? Let's put it way up here. Um, development equal to uh, this thing. Usually good to give this a name that is unlikely to be messed up later. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say if message email and not shitter development. Uh, sorry, just development. Um, then I won't allow it. And now the last piece of the puzzle is here in my package.json file. When I start this up locally. Uh, and I run my server, I already said git commit, I'm also gonna say shitter relevant is equal to true. And then it's usually good practice to have some type of warning message 
Right. Partly so that I know it worked, um, which it didn't. <laughs> oh, I know why. I need to restart this. Uh, when, when you make changes to the node mod configuration, it doesn't pick it up until you restart node mod. There we go. Okay. So that's good. Um, and, and, you know, again, I mean, I, I think sometimes people approach stuff like this where it's like, I had to do, I, I've actually done a, an embarrassing amount of work. Like think about the fake users that we added to the CS125 help site. Like that turned out to actually require a fair amount of work. Um, it's useful. Yeah. Because otherwise really I have no idea whether or not things are working, but, um, this type of, these type of hacks to support development are both completely necessary and also really important for you to think about as you're working to make sure that you don't inadvertently leave stuff like this dangling in production because people find those things and, and take advantage of them. All right, so now I should be able to send uh, unvalidated emails when I'm running a development, but the last thing I need to do is I actually need to set these guys up with an email address. We'll say email is equal to student, um, and actually, let's let's just have one of these be fake because I want to see if the avatar works. And fake at Illinois.edu is not going to have an avatar. So, um, okay, let's reload this. Let's see if it loads in. Okay, and then uh, now every now everything is to the left, uh, which seems like it's a bug. So let's go back and try to figure out why. Uh, Oh, okay, gotcha. And I need to use actual email. Email, change that. Okay, there we go. Well, now, okay. Now it's like everything is to the left for this guy and to the right for this guy. So that's weird. That's reversed. <laughs> well, I don't think it's reversed. It's it's supposed to. Yeah, this this one is supposed to be. Oh, and I've got like five sockets open too. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. That's doing the wrong thing. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. It's, it's well, no, it's not reversed. It's just this bottom one is always on the right, and the top one is always on the left. Um, Might so be the same thing function. Yeah, let's look at that. That's a good point. Uh, well, no, I said email to actual email, um, and up here I set this to. What we'll do is let's do just log the actual email. Yeah, I've broken something. Okay. That's right. So one of them is fake and the other is that, right? And what about my server? Oh, oh, <laughs> I know what's happening. This is the problem, right? So I'm overwriting the, the value with the actual value. So, so this is, this is the problem. So we'll say, um, so, okay. So, so I've, I've gotten here and basically Here's actual email here. Well, I'm on the server now. So, so basically what I'm going to do, and this is one of these like fun pieces of JavaScript grossness is I'm going to use the email address that's set on the message. Otherwise I'll use the official email. Um, so, you know, again, if, if you were, if you were paranoid, you would say, if development, I'll use either. Otherwise, I will always set this. Now, I shouldn't get here, right? Because I should have failed to check above, but this isn't a bad, a bad thing to add. OK, so now that shows, oh, look at that. Cool. Try the other books. Yeah. Nice. OK. Nice. Cool. So now let's uh, let's try to get that gravatar thing working. For Ten minutes. Yeah. All right. Wait, can you commit this? I will when, once we're done. Okay. So very typical workflow when you're using npm. Grab a package. Okay. So <laughs> this like, could you do this yourself? You could. It's actually pretty pretty easy. Um, but you know this is a package and it will do it for you. And then I don't have to think about how to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh. So. Last time I did it, I did do it myself. I figured out how to generate the URLs and find the images and the sizes. I know. If you're interested in that sort of thing, then by all means, uh, go for it. <laughs> uh, what I want to do is actually this. So I think all I want is 
this guy. And this is probably going to give me something bigger than I want, but that's okay for now. We can come back later and, and, uh, and figure it out. Now, this is like literally a transformation that involves a hash. So it's not slow. And so what I'm going to do, you know, you could, you could like hash these in some map somewhere so you didn't regenerate it. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to stick it in here. Um, so I'll do uh, image force is equal to, oh, I need to uh, actually import it. So we'll do, tell me how to do that. Uh, it's close enough. Avatar, I'm probably going to complain about not having types for this. Yeah, we'll do that in a sec. For now, let's come down here. Uh, message menu. Oh, it doesn't know what type it is. Okay, let's just let's just install the device package. It has one. Now, there we go. Okay, sorry, it's, it's not a map. It's just a value. Uh, yeah, okay, so I must maybe it's this. You never know how these things get exported. Oh, it's gravatar.url. Sorry, I'm an idiot. I can't read that. At this point, maybe actually we would have been able to just build it ourselves. Um, yeah, and I know this is a string at this point. So, I'm gonna... so, so sometimes with TypeScript, you know, like like any other uh, typing system, there are times when you know more than it does. So at this point, it now again, we could fix this by creating different types for sending and receiving Twitter messages, but we haven't become that ambitious yet. So at this point, it still thinks that it's possible that message e that email is undefined. We know better because we know the server has already added it. Um, and so if you want to, this is sort of the equivalent of a typecast in TypeScript. I'm basically telling it like, that's a string, trust me. So let's see what happens now. Ooh, look at that. There I am. Um, now, and there's a, there's a that's default. A default. Our, nice, okay. There's a way to make the, the, this like the default CS1, CS125 Gravatar. Um, all right, so now, uh, let's try to make this suck a little less because it's sort of ugly. Um, what we really need to do is we basically need to float this to the right of the container so that the text will. Um, actually, you know what? This this is a this is classes dot message. So this is also a flex. Ooh, fun. Okay. Um, so messages is a flex container. Message is. Let's see what happens if we do style is equal. Sometimes when you're just messing around with front end stuff, it's helpful to be able to use. That didn't really help, did it? Uh, no. It's helpful to just put style attributes on stuff. At some point, you can promote those to classes. All right, so now let's see what's happening. Um, I think the problem is that this is, yeah, so this is a flex box, which is fine. The problem is that this guy, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, it's this one. Oh, sorry. I think what I want is for message. Yeah, sorry. This one is what I need to fix. So messages now is also going to be. So a container can both be a flex component and a flex container. Uh, ooh, look at that. Something happened. That's not good. Oh, no. <laughs> that, that looks very intentional and very good. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. No, this is actually, this is actually a good sign. <laughs> um, because the problem is that this thing, we've told that to stretch to fill its contents. But we haven't told this to stretch to fill its content. It's, it's, it's actually the, um, it's actually the message contents that we want to fill. The, the box, right? Not this. So I'll just, I can just take this off, I think. Um, let's see what happens now. Okay. 
yeah, so now we've got this weird situation where the gravatar is not on the right side, right? It should be over here, right? Um, it's always to the left. And so now, uh, this is getting sort of, sort of, well, you know what? Uh, we, we've got this because Flexbox really is like the best thing to happen to CSS since the dawn of time. Um, so check this out. We're going to do flex direction, and we're going to <laughs> uh, so text align. We're going to keep that because we still want that, but we also need to set the flex direction properly. Let's say message. We probably should just pull this out and be like row. Otherwise, row. Uh, No, stop. Go reverse. Okay, so that's either right or wrong. We're about to find out. It's either forward, right, or backwards. Uh, it's wrong, and so now we'll just flip it around. Ah, check it out. Okay. Nice. Uh, now, you know, we should put some padding in there and shit like that. You guys get the idea, right? Uh, and this should not be so big. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is, and that's actually, that would be, let's see here, style is equal to. Uh, Are you able to make it a circle instead of a square? Probably. Uh, that's probably somewhere in the options. Uh, that looks better. Um, Gravatar, let's see. Options, size, default, rating. They're op like, what the fuck is wrong with them? The options are so weird. I've seen this before. It's like they've decided to make everything as small as possible so that it's impossible to understand. Um, S is for size. D is I rating. Have... R is for default. Hold on. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, Gravatar, you can say your profile is like PG or adult or whatever for right, right, some right. reason. Yeah, pro probably the way to do this actually. So at some point here, the other thing we should probably remember is that we are using material. And so we do want to take advantage of that. And I'm pretty sure, oh my gosh, every time I go to the material website, it changes. They really have a bug with their uh, backdrop detection because it changes like four times. Um, I'm pretty sure they have like a Gravatar component here. And I think that it will do, or an image component, uh, image avatar, here we go. Yeah, there we go. And so this would actually probably do the right thing uh, if we wanted. So let's, you know, you, you guys can drop off whenever you want to. I'm just gonna spend one more minute and see if I can make this a little bit prettier. Um, Really wide. I'm going to head out, but I will keep working on front end because front end is fun. Cool. I'm glad yeah. someone thinks front end is fun. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll meet up again uh, on Thursday, and then on Thursday I think we'll actually uh, look. There's a circle now. Oh, okay. Hey. Nice. Hey. Right on time. All right. So anyway, yeah. I mean, have fun with this, right? I mean, I think it would be nice to get the the message you want to be a little bit more uh, a little bit cuter. Um, the other thing, and, and then at some point, I think what we should probably do is just deploy this on GitHub as a demo, so that because then you can actually have multiple people chatting on it and see see how it works. So. All right, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I will see you. Uh, uh, see you next time. Jeff, could you also upload like the last video as well? Yeah, I know. I forgot to do that. I will. Uh, I'll do that, yeah. and I'll put up today's as well. Harsh, why yeah, are you I'd... awake? <laughs> it's like, it's like. 3.30, why are you awake? Shh, I woke up three hours ago. Hey, it's 5 p.m. here, and I woke up like four hours ago. All right, well, sleep is important. I hope you guys okay. all get enough. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah.